On today's show, controversial claims. I think everybody prostitutes themselves a little bit. Peter took us to a dark place. Horrible happiness. If I punch you in the face, you'd probably laugh. And fierce face-offs. I'm telling you what I think of you. But you're good at telling people what you think of them, Jane. You're not good at hearing the truth. She has all the breeding of, of a cheap pair of shoes. As four strangers battle it out to win a thousand pound prize. Tonight's gonna be the American dream. Let's just hope it doesn't turn into the American nightmare. <laughs> Oxfordshire, where in the 17th century, doctors prescribed potato peelings to combat the plague. <coughs> and hoping she won't get into any scrapes with her guests tonight is our first host, life and soul of the party, Charlotte Hughes. There's been a few people that have said to me, like, uh, Charlotte, how can you be so happy all the time? And I'm like, oh, well, you can never be too happy. <laughs> you sure about that? And Charlotte's relentlessly positive attitude is reflected in her food. My menu this evening is the winning menu, so it's good, simple food, and people are going to walk out the door with a smile on their face, so full of happiness, and I'm going to win. Lovely! One person she'll need to impress is brainy American student Adam Mastroianni. I'd say I'm a little bit of a nerd. I think you just kind of can tell looking at me. <laughs> I think my friends would probably describe me as um, hopefully funny, lanky, awkward, showing an increasing amount of grey hair at an inappropriately young age. Never did George Clooney any harm. Back in the kitchen and Charlotte's kicking off with dessert. Chipper chocolate brownies on cloud nine. I don't know if there's going to be some kind of like liquid nitrogen that we like take the brownies out of. It's definitely not Heston Blumenthal cooking. Cloud Nine is in fact homemade ice cream, and her first job is to de-seed the vanilla pods. I don't they like seeds? They do. Having stirred the seeds in warmed milk, she then transfers to a bowl and leaves to set before moving on to her chipper chocolate brownies. There's some sort of clues going on in this menu, isn't there? You must be a detective. <laughs> oh, you actually are. Put your hands behind your back. Third up today is boisterous police officer Jane Smith. I'm a bit naughty, I'm a bit cheeky. I give as good as I get. I generally do like to chip in and try and offend and shock as much as I can. There's a difference between being confident and being arrogant. I'd say I'm quite a confident human being, but I wouldn't ever say I'm arrogant. I'm a salesman, which makes me ultimately competitive. Completing this week's lineup is Peter Marsh, who has rather exacting standards, don't you know, as well as a shiny dog. I expect other people to do it, do things the way I would do it, and if they're not, I wonder why they're not as good. Back in the kitchen, Charlotte's hard at work on her brownie. To caster sugar and eggs, she slowly adds melted chocolate. I'm not very well equipped in the kitchen, and instead of a rubber spatula, I've got a rubber. No, it is a spatula. She adds white and dark chocolate to the mix before pouring the lot in a baking tray and popping in the oven. On to her starter. Bubbly barbecue skewers with dippy dips and pits. Armpits. I doubt it. Cess pits. Unlikely. Car changing pits. No. I will be using these. Ah, pitter. These are my pits. Pits, <laughs> pitter bread, gotcha. Charlotte starts by chopping up the pork for her kebabs. It's not sort of a thing you'd want to eat at a dinner party. It's the sort of thing I'd want to eat from a kebab shop. Well, they are kebabs. To accompany the skewers, Charlotte's creating a selection of dips, starting with tzatziki. I like cucumber and I like yoghurt, so the two of them together. She adds grated cucumber to yoghurt with lemon juice and garlic. Quick taste test. Yeah, it tastes nice. Yeah, I'm happy with that. Good, good. Rounding off her menu is the main, chirpy chicken wrapped in hooray ham. I can't say I've ever encountered chicken wrapped in ham. Those are things I would eat separately, so why not save some time and eat them together? I'm just not a big lover of things wrapped in things. I bet Christmas is fun in your house. <laughs> Having stuffed the chicken with a pesto mix, Charlotte wraps them with parma ham. She'll cook just before serving. I hope that the guests don't think my menu's too happy. I am getting the vibe that they are quite sort of like a, maybe a bit ditzy. 
Blonde, female. Sterling work detective. I'm judging people on what they serve and how they serve it. Food prep done, it's off to get changed before welcoming her guests. First to the door is salesman Peter. Hello! Hello. Hi, hi, I'm Charlotte. Nice Hello, to meet Charlotte. you. Hello Charlotte, I'm Peter. Oh, come on through. It's the first night, so I don't know who I'm answering my door to, so... I got a little bit from your knock. I thought, oh, that's quite a strong knock, so I thought it's no, definitely a man. Just fat hands. <laughs> I'd, say, I'd say strong, not fat. Very diplomatic. Next up is American student, Adam. Hello! Hey, Hi! Hey, nice Adam. to meet you. Adam, Good I'm Charlotte. You. Come Hi. on in. Oh. Hey, there we go. I did it! I did it! Well done, you! Evening all. Last in, it's brash police detective, Jane. Hello! Hi! <laughs> Hello! So, how's everyone feeling? Nervous? Yeah. Yeah? yeah. Excitedly nervous. Excited, that's nice. No scared? No one's scared? No. No? Are you sure? Cheers! Cheers! Coming up, podgy put-downs. Pie-eating. <laughs> I was going to make a comment about a fat ass. I didn't, and I was good. And grim guessing games. 27. 28. 31. I'm 24 years old. <laughs> the game that will never hurt anyone's feelings ever. Oh, except mine. <laughs> It's the first night in East Oxfordshire, where super cheerful Charlotte Hughes is hoping to win the grand with a happy themed menu. It's a good week, can't wait. While the host gets on with the starter, her guests are tackling a photo they found in the bedroom. Is that her? I reckon that's her ten years ago. No way. Yeah. Did not expect her to be a soccer player. I expected her to be a jelly bean collector. Now there's a noble sport. <laughs> yeah, because the only sports I know. Yeah, none. <laughs> Pie-eating. Oh! Thanks. That's <laughs> That's, no, That's how you make friends on the first night. I mean, I didn't mean it in a nasty way. How did you mean it? It was a joke, but he does look like he's at a few parties. I probably did annoy him a little bit. You think? I thought you cheeky cow. I was going to make a comment about a fat ass. I didn't, and I was good. Play nice, you two. In the kitchen, the starter's ready to go. I think they're going to have a great evening, and I think I might even win this thing. If it was a cheerful contest, you'd be a dead cert. First happy course is bubbly barbecue pork skewers with dippy dips and pits. So, Lady Jane first. Thank you. This looks delightful. I'll just go for you, Adam. Thank you. <laughs> Did you mix all of these together as well? Yeah. Did you make tzatziki? Yeah. I love tzatziki. Yeah. It's lovely. <laughs> yes. It's not the sort of thing I would eat in a restaurant. It's not the sort of thing I would... I would want to eat anything other than lunch sat round a barbecue. I was about to say, oh, the chicken is quite nice. Turns out, not chicken. That was pork. That was quite tasty. I think the starter went down really well. Um, they all seemed to eat it, and they complimented me on my, on my dips. So that's good, so that was like, woo, woo. Stop the fun train, I want to get off. Is everyone up for us guessing each other's ages? We don't want to be friends with each other, okay. so let's get started mm. this way. I reckon you're about 27. 28. 31. I'm 24 years old. <laughs> As of like three weeks ago, I'm 24. <laughs> Classic game of Guess the Age, the game that will never hurt anyone's feelings ever. Oh, except mine. You're only a year older than me. <laughs> he is no way 24. So, I'm going to clear the plates and get ready for the next course. Really pleased with how the chicken's turned out. Um, I haven't burnt it. I just hope my guests like it too. Get your laughing gear around this, folks. It's chirpy chicken wrapped in hooray ham. There we go. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Mankles was actually really, really tasty. Do you know what? It wasn't complex, but it was tasty. There's lots of things that she could have done better. The parma ham was like eating um, plastic. So what I should have done is snipped all the parma ham off, binned it, just eaten the chicken. Completely oblivious, Charlotte is more interested in revealing her favourite nightwear. After work or something like that, I'll come home, get in my onesie, chill out. When you say a onesie, do you mean like, like bunny pyjamas? Do you want me to go get it? Yeah. Oh. Uh, you've literally known these people for like two hours 
and now you are wearing uh, your like intimate bed clothes in front of them. But she seemed really happy about it. I absolutely hate. Peter, that. you put it on. You put it on. <laughs> that it won't fit. It is the ultimate fashion disaster. They should all be taken out in the middle of the street and burned. It's a bit harsh. Mine's lovely. Peter's nice, don't get me wrong. He's not my cup of tea. He grates on me a little bit. I doubt the host has picked up on any bad vibes. Everything makes me happy. Literally everything. Like even Literally like, everything makes you happy. Everything. Do you know what? She's she's inoffensive. She's a sweetheart. She's very smiley. It, it almost like if I punch her in the face, she'd probably laugh. Please don't. The starter and the main went really, really, really well, and all the plates were clear, so I'm really, really confident that I'm going to win the grand. Woo-hoo! Enough glee. It's time for the serious business of dessert. I'm really impressed. I actually cannot believe that I've made this. You did. We saw you. It's chipper chocolate brownies with homemade ice cream. So I have met some famous people. Who are we talking? Brad Pitt, Scarlett Johansson? Cat Slater. Ah. Oh. And Sonia from EastEnders. Surely no one can top that. <laughs> I've met Greg Wallace, the TV chef. That was quite bizarre. Boom! The bold man. Yeah. The bold man who loves a pudding. Yeah. Him. Oh, this is Greg Wallace. This is what he does. <laughs> well, that's... <laughs> sensual. Flirting doesn't get tougher than that! Dessert was absolutely delicious. Everybody's happy. They all had a smile on their face. That's quite nice. And I think I might even win. Whoop, whoop. You're going to have to stop doing that. So Charlotte says that everything makes her happy. So numbers probably make her happy. Well, hope she likes seven. I'm going to give Charlotte a seven. I'd like to give Charlotte a super six. So, a respectable 20 out of 30. Not a score to sing and dance about, but I doubt that'll stop Charlotte. It's day two in East Oxfordshire and the turn of kooky American student Adam Mastroianni, who's hoping to win the grand with a rather unique menu. It is something you can only get from a kooky Midwesterner who's come over here for two years um, and has barely understood British culture yet. That's pretty niche, man. And his guests aren't sure what to expect either. I think that Adam will take a few risks because I think he's quite clever. Maybe something like quite sciencey. So Nothing out of this world about his starter. They're deep dish pizzas. If they're little tiny sort of rings of shop bought pizza that have been top the cardboard base has been topped up with a bit of bit of cheap cheese, then that would be horrible. How dare you! I chose to make deep dish pizzas because I don't think that anyone in this country has tried true deep dish pizza, like from the heartland of America. yee For his dough, he mixes together flour, water, and yeast. If people get in here and, and say, oh, pizza, why are we eating pizza for dinner? I'm going to say, hey, we're having pizza for dinner. Well, that'll show them. Dough mixture left to prove it's onto the pizza sauce. If there's one thing that I'm more confident in than anything else, it's making the sauce. Interesting technique. To the crushed garlic and tomato puree, he adds basil, or as our American cousins would say, basil. I've noticed the English say pasta instead of pasta. So I would say to you guys, just stop living in the pasta. Dude, that sucks. He finishes off his sauce with tomato and oregano. <laughs> Next up, dessert. Chocolate chip cookies. Biscuits for pudding. Mmm. For the mixture, he adds sugar to vegetable oil, butter, demerara sugar, flour, and vanilla extract. I'm really confident in this. It's looking great. Yes, the American dream. He rolls the cookie dough into balls, which he'll bake later. Next up on Adam's unconventional menu is a breakfast burrito. It's a bit odd. I don't understand why anyone would want to give that at a dinner party, it's foul. Who said it was chicken? Sorry. For his salsa, he mixes onions, tomatoes, green peppers and jalapenos, but there's one particular guest he's worried about. I think Peter's gonna be hard to impress tonight. He's gonna go like, yeah, eggs for dinner. I don't know about that. I love burritos. I don't really like them for breakfast. Well, this is dinner. Food prep done and Adam is feeling philosophical. Tonight's gonna be the American dream. Let's just hope it doesn't turn into the American Nightmare. All right, time to win a thousand pounds. 
First up, oh, very dapper. It's Peter, or Peter. Hey, Hi. good to see you. Come on in. How are you? Doing well. American Red Cubs. I would have it no other way. Next in is Hyper Happy Charlotte. Hi, come on in. Hello. Hey, good hey, good to see you. Oh, you're so tall. <laughs> you only just noticed. And Peter, you're looking very smart. A little too smart. No, 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 no. <laughs> Do some for the police. Last to arrive, it's headstrong detective Jane. Doing you're looking great. It feels a bit like a frat house party now, doesn't it? A little bit, yeah. That's what I wanted to, to give you guys. Gonna take more than red cups to win the grand. How are the pizza pies doing? I, I think I'm happy with how they came out. We won't know exactly until you actually cut into them, the consistency of the dough. You got the right the party on, dude! It's pizza time. Here you are, Peter. Gee, thanks. <laughs> You're welcome. Mmm. Do you know what? It's actually really, really tasty. <laughs> it I'm, is. I'm we, we really, really surprised. <laughs> you weren't expecting them to be good? No, I'm sorry. <laughs> it was dumped on a white plate and it kind of looked lost in the middle. And it did look like it was filled with pus, but it tasted really nice. I can't fault the taste, it's just the presentation. A pizza on a plate, how ghastly for you. The best part was that people thought they were going to be rancid and they weren't. Um, so expectations were low, results were high. And that's awesome. That's totally bodacious, dude. Do you have a girlfriend here? I do, yeah. Well, you've met someone that quick. <laughs> Adam! Well... So is she English? British? English? What are, what are we? English? Or yeah, I don't know that... Wait, you guys tell me. What's the difference between them? I'm English. <laughs> oh. If you were born in Wales, you'd, you'd be, be British. Welsh. You'd be Welsh. <laughs> Because they said when you're English, you're British too, but if you're British, you're not in... Oh, I don't know. Clearly. Um, but if you guys are all done, I'm gonna, uh, yeah. I can go take your plates and do, do the main. I think I, I definitely took a risk, and I think it definitely paid off. You bet big, you win big. That's what my grandfather taught me, and, uh, and it came true tonight. And the unusual food gambles continue with scrambled eggs for dinner. Oh, OK. If it, if it is controversial to my guests, it just means they have weird social mores about food that I am here to destroy. Never found out why you and I'm sure they'll appreciate that. There it is, a breakfast burrito. Let the culinary education begin. I think people normally associate um, egg and bacon with breakfast. Yeah. Um, and I want to make the case that they are delicious foods that can be eaten any time of the day. Convinced? Is it dinner party food? Probably not. The main course looked to me like I had eaten my breakfast and puked the entire lot back up. I am an infinitely better cook than anything I've seen so far. Jane's the one to beat at the moment. With the no eggs for dinner law well and truly shattered, Peter wants to change another one. I'd remove the speed limit from motorways. Do you not think that's a bit reckless? <laughs> no, I went. I was. I recently drove through Germany on the autobahn, mm. and I was driving, and I got to about 110 miles an hour, and all I could think of was, I'm breaking the law. I'm breaking the law. I'm breaking the law. But in Germany, there's no limit. In this country, because we have the congestion that we have, you have to enforce the speed limit because otherwise, people will just kill themselves. Jane has opinions, and they're not going to shift. If you don't agree with them, I'm not so sure she would cope with that particularly well. The problem is, is they don't know what my job is, do they? Don't make ridiculously stupid comments like that when you've got absolutely no concept of what you're talking about. I bet you're glad he doesn't want to run the country, then. I would probably like to run the country. Oh! Oh, God, really? Do you think I'd make a good prime minister? N no. If Peter was Prime, Prime Minister, I'd probably move to a different country, if I'm honest with you. I am very good at getting what I want done. I think I would make a very good Prime Minister. I think he's a lovely person, but I don't think he would take criticism very well. I think there are vast differences in educational standards between one end of the country and the other. Oh, it's all getting a bit serious. Come on, Adam, time to lighten the mood. So, I'm not just a student, um, I'm also a member of the Oxford Imps, which is an improv comedy group. Um, and as part of dinner tonight, I'd like to do a, do a little thing for you, if that's Yay! all right. All right, I'm gonna go get my stuff and be right back. I wasn't surprised, because I could tell he's very creative. Jane, that's her name, no, she's not playing. You might think that she's a little bit insane, but if you weren't <laughs> here, 
Yeah, we definitely miss you, because you're the best at taking out the piss, yeah. <laughs> what a clever, clever, clever guy. Thumbs up to him, because he's massively gone up in my estimations. Hey, Peter, it's really great to meet you. You seem like a good cook, don't think I can beat you. You are the best dressed, really like your checkered shirt and your vest. <laughs> Adam's improvised rap is very clever, but it's about the food and the food was bad. I think they maybe have never seen anyone rap or improvise, let alone both of them at the same time. Um, I could not be happier. <laughs> and the warm fuzziness continues with Adam's American style bedtime treat. Now that's what I'm talking about. Rock a bye, your baby. Nighty night, everyone. It's milk and cookies. You should try dunking them in the milk, which is the true yes, American way to eat them. Pink has got a milk moustache and it's rank. Uh, making me want to be sick. <laughs> Taxis! The cookies themselves were delicious. They were warm, they were soft, they were ch like lovely and chewy. Really good night. Best night of my life? Maybe. I'm gonna give Adam a saucy seven. I'm gonna give Adam a big fat super size eight. I really enjoyed Adam's company tonight, but I didn't enjoy the food, so I'm gonna score Adam a five. Despite that, our resident Yank Adam is standing shoulder to shoulder in top spot with Charlotte on 20 points. Coming up, illegal impersonations. Suspicious. Wait a minute. Hello, hello, hello. What's going on here then? <laughs> I was genuinely surprised that Jane was a policewoman. And cruel comparisons. A little bit of an older James Corden, maybe. <laughs> Looking like James Corden offends me. It's day three in East Oxfordshire and the turn of police detective Jane Smith to host and her guests are expecting an arresting evening. <laughs> I'm really interested to see what Jane's going to pull out the bag tonight because Jane is my competition, I think. Maybe it'll turn out she's like this fantastic cook, but I'm really hoping for a loud, in-your-face dinner party. So tonight I'm going to deliver tasty food. Everyone's going to love it. If they don't, it's criminal. I see what you did there, officer. Move along now, please, and get on with your starter. Something's fishy. Fish cakes. I love fish cakes. I really, really love fish cakes. I'm really happy about that. You think of a fish, you're like, OK. You think of a cake, you're like, all right. You think of a fish cake, and you're like, hmm. Are we going to stick candles in it and sing happy birthday? Maybe in America. For her fish cakes, Jane mixes prawns, cod, Crab, lemon zest, and spring onion with mashed potato. I've made a fish cake. <laughs> Look at it. Ah. Calm down, dear. It's only a fish cake. To finish, she rolls in breadcrumbs. Next, it's on to her dessert. Law abiding lemon posset with shortbread. I've never had a criminal dessert. Um, I've never had dessert that's done some hard time. She's a policewoman. Isn't she? Is she a policewoman? Oh, clever old you. For Jane's posset, she adds lemon juice and zest to boil cream and caster sugar, then decants the mixture into individual mugs and leaves to set. Ta-da! Next, shortbread. To start, she mixes butter, caster sugar and flour, then kneads. Get your biceps working. Hopefully, um, they'll definitely uh, score me some brownie points. Or shortbread points. I love anything lemon flavoured for dessert. Thank you. Oh, germs! She rolls out the mixture, then cuts into tiny little hearts. She'll bake them just before serving, so for now, moves on to her main. Bring that barbecue chicken with crime-stopping coleslaw. Try not to have nightmares. Is the banged-up barbecue chicken the result of police brutality? If the chicken's undercooked for the main course, that'll be really bad. Cheer up, Peter. She'll cook her chicken before serving, so it's onto the coleslaw. She mixes grated carrots with onions and cabbage and a sprinkling of parsley. Get in! To finish, a few squirts of mayonnaise, some seasoning, and it's done. Today's gone really well, actually. I think I might have pulled it off, so I'm happy with what I've done. After a quick change, it's time to welcome her guests. If it makes you happy. First to the door is chirpy Charlotte. Hello! Hello. Come in. How are you? I'm very well. How are you? Good, Come yeah, in. that's for you. Thank you, my love. <laughs> Next in, opinionated Pete. Hello. Had a good day. Yeah. Welcome to my home. Hello. Hi, How Peter. Are you? I'm good. You? Yeah. Oh, we're matching, we're matching. Don't wanna be an American idiot. 
And finally, wacky student Adam. Hey, Adam. Hi. Come in. Hey, so good to see you. Cheers. <sighs> While Jane whips her starter into shape, the others investigate her bedroom. Guys, let's snoop around Jane's room. Ooh, this is, um, suspicious. Wait a minute. I was genuinely surprised that Jane was a policewoman. I don't know what I was expecting, but it wasn't that. Finding out Jane was a policewoman is no revelation at all, because she's very forthright. She's very definite about her opinions, and working in the law, that's a, it's a definitive thing. Time to teach resident Yank Adam the finer details of British policing. I think the classic thing that coppers say is, hello, 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 what's going on here then? Hello, 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 what's going on here then? <laughs> Going on. Going on. Going on. Going on. Move along, move along. What's going on in the kitchen then? I'm really happy. I just hope I just hope it tastes nice. I've put a lot of love and soul into this. So if they don't enjoy it, I'm just gonna be a little bit mad if I'm honest with you. That's the spirit. There it is. Fish cake with a poached egg and hollandaise sauce. That's lovely. Mmm. Yeah. Damn, it's lovely. <laughs> <laughs> There's something really really dirty about runny poached eggs that everybody loves. What? The concept of a fish cake. If I was like, oh, let's have a fish biscuit, I don't know if that would be really appetizing to people. Oh, fish biscuit. We had a little snoop upstairs in your bedroom. Yeah. Um, and we opened your cupboards. Yeah. And you're a policewoman. I'm a detective. Are you really? Whoa. I'll deal with anything up to like an attempted murder. That's the sort of thing that I'll deal with on a daily basis. Once I found out that Jane was a policewoman, it all clicked with me because she says it how it is. So if she thinks something's wrong or whatever, she'll say it. How often do you have to like chase a criminal down and like tackle them and and <laughs> handcuff them and book them down in downtown? What, next door to Maudlin College? I tend to pick up an investigation after an arrest phase has taken place. Probably like any job, it's more paperwork and less like shooting bad guys and taking down drug cartels. This is Oxfordshire. Everyone happy? I think everyone loved it, really loved it, um, without sounding totally above my station. Yeah, I think they really did love it. Hopefully, the mains will just um, be as well received as the um, starter. Well, we're about to find out. It's barbecue chicken, chips and coleslaw. I think the main course was really nice. Um, it was all things that I sort of tend to eat normally. I wanted to come in here and be like, bam, pow, wham, like, we're having a, a crazy night. And it was just like, it's just it's just good food. And that's pretty, pretty much it. Do you know who you remind me of? Beaker from Sesame Street. <laughs> <laughs> nope, nope, nope. <laughs> Jane, I think you look like Victoria Beckham. Just oh. putting it out there. <laughs> You could probably make two Victoria Beckhams. No, that's, you could, you know, Victoria Beckham is tall, thin, brown hair. Jane does not look like Victoria Beckham in any way. Ultimately, he's either massively taking the mickey out of me to my face, which I think is probably quite accurate, or he's just blind. I think I took it that he was being a bit rude. I just didn't, didn't see the need for that little comment. <sighs> A little bit of an older James Corden, maybe. <laughs> I don't suppose Corden's too happy either. Yeah, I, it just it got awkward. I think Jane um, took a swipe back at Peter. Looking like James Corden offends me, because that's mingy. Yeah, because you wouldn't offend anyone, Peter. I think everybody prostitutes themselves a little bit. What's he talking about now? What do you mean? I don't get it. You'll all try a bit harder to get a nicer birthday present or a Christmas present. Oh, see, all... I just think that's utter rubbish. I think everybody puts out a little bit more to get a nice, to get what they want in life. I will do things because I want to. I won't do things just to get something out of it. I think it's a really sad um, way to think if you think you're given something because there's an agenda. Peter um, took us to a dark place. Peter is just a bit of an odd little man, isn't he? He's just got some very, very, very odd opinions. There is a certain amount of naivety in believing that people do everything just because they want to. Moving on. So, guys, if everyone's finished, I'm going to clear the plates. Lovely, thank you. The main course I went really well. I'm really pleased. We're on the home furlong. Is it hopefully going to be my uh, victory to a £1,000. Hooray. Here it is, lemon posset with homemade shortbread. Mmm. Mmm. 
Yeah, that's quite nice actually, Jane. I want to say it's really, really nasty, but that would be lying because it's really, really good. Is it? That looked hard to say. Who's your celebrity crush? Although I am a um, a heterosexual male in a relationship, my celebrity crushes are men, um, and they are Michael C. Hall and Harrison Ford. Um, yeah, I yeah. can see that. My celebrity crush is Kenzie from Blazing Squad. Big Blazing Squad fan, Peter. See you at the crossroads, crossroads, crossroads. See you at the crossroads, crossroads, crossroads. No. 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 Taxes! I was really um, surprised by Jane's dessert. I didn't think I was going to like it because I'm not really a lemony sort of person, but it was really nice. If I was going to school myself, um, I'd definitely give myself somewhere between a 10 and a 10. I really love Jane's starter. I could have eaten that three or four times. And Jane's pudding was sublimely good. So for that, I'd like to give Jane an 8. So the food was fine, but it was very safe, and that's not Jane. Bet small, win small, gonna say six. I'm gonna score Jane an eight. And with that, Jane steals into first place with 22 points. It's the final day in East Oxfordshire, and our last host, Peter Marsh, is feeling confident he can win with a more refined evening. Tonight is about sophisticated food, and leaving the best till last. But his guests are more concerned with his attitude than his food. I think Peter isn't afraid to alienate people, which I think is okay when you're a guest. I don't know how that plays when you're a host. I know this is gonna sound a bit nasty, but I al he's almost a bit, like, sly. I think that Jane and Peter um, do clash heads a little bit. I think they're both strong and opinionated. Um, so, yeah, I think there might be some more trouble this evening. However, Peter's left no stone unturned in his effort to win. I probably am Jane's biggest competition, whether my food is better than Jane's. I really hope it is. I really hope the presentation and the quality of the ingredients really makes it sing. The proof is in the pudding, or puddings, there's three of them. Espresso mousse, creme brulee and a deconstructed cheesecake. I thought this was a three-course meal, not a five. Um, that's all right. Um, I would say just, just Peter, pick one. I feel like he's trying to please everybody. If he can pull it off, fair play, but if they're rubbish, I'll tell him they're rubbish. He starts by making a lemon jelly, squeezing a whopping eight lemons. He then adds caster sugar, gelatin, and vanilla extract before heating through. I love cheesecake. It's one of my favorite desserts. Next, it's onto his cheese layer, blending cream and cream cheese. And after blitzing, it's done. Go on, have a quick lick of the spatula. <laughs> I said a quick lick, fella. Mm. Oh, good gracious me. He'll build the rest of the cheesecake later and serve with espresso mousse and creme brulee. Next, it's onto the main slow roasted rib of beef. I am sure that Peter knows how to cook a big block of meat. I think beef is quite risky because um, he's got three guests who all would probably like their meat differently. That's not the way Peter sees it. Almost absolutely nothing can go wrong with this unless the oven blows up. After seasoning the beef, he pours over red wine and onions. This is a winning main course because it's local food, killed locally, served locally. It goes in the oven to slow roast, so it's on to his starter. Pecorino salad with goat's cheese, roasted peach and a balsamic dressing. It is just salad. Fruit doesn't belong in a salad unless it's a fruit salad. These are little flat peaches, which I'm going to cut in half and grill just before we serve the salad. I've done everything I can. Nothing can go wrong now. Oh, cocky. So just time for a quick change before welcoming the first guest. And it's the woman to beat, straight off the beat, Jane. Hello. Hello. Come on in. How are you? Very well, you? Very well. Thanks very much. Should come through. Can't wait. Oh, well done. I think I'm going to like this. Thank you ever so much. Next, it's quirky student Adam. How you doing? Good, come on in. Thank you. I like your blazer. Oh, thanks. <laughs> Last in, it's chirpy Charlotte. Oh, hello. How are you? I'm good, thank you. Cheers. 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 Coming up, home truths. You are quite a sort of pompous human being. I'm actually quite offended now to sit there in someone else's home and rip into them with a pouring. Raucous rouse. I put so much effort into this to make it special for you, not for those two. 
He made all of us feel so uncomfortable. And someone wins a grand. In fourth place... It's the final night in East Oxfordshire and the turn of super opinionated salesman Peter Marsh, who's hoping to win the grand with an evening of sophistication. In the kitchen, he's putting the finishing touches to his starter. Ooh. I'm really happy with the way the starters look. I really hope my guests enjoy it. It looks pretty fancy. Et voila! Pecorino salad with goat's cheese and roasted peaches. How's that refined starter going down? I like cheddar cheese. <laughs> I like Dairyly Dunkers. Um, I'm not so fond of grown-up cheese, I would <laughs> call it. <laughs> but I just don't think I appreciate fancy food. I'm it's quite a basic palate. <laughs> no, it's fine. It's not really, is it? It was just a little bit insulting to have someone roll up their nose like a spoilt nine-year-old and say they don't like something and they wouldn't eat it. I don't appreciate strong cheese. Salad wasn't my thing. I appreciate the fanciness and I can appreciate the craftsmanship that went into it, but I think he overestimated uh, the development of the palates at the table. Despite the fancy food falling flat, Peter's not throwing in the towel. The party isn't over till the fat girl sings. And until we get a good tune out of Jane, the party's not over. Steady on, fella. So I've got two courses to go, and I can honestly say, hand on heart, these two courses are far better than anything else that I've seen this week. Clearly, Peter's up for the fight, but he'll need to produce a knockout main. Slow roasted beef with mash and veg. I'm hoping yours is cooked perfectly, Jane. Mm. So the main course was tasty. It looked really, really nice on my plate. It had some real punch to it, it had some real flavour to it. You do have to chop the fat away from the meat, because it's that's the fat that gets the meat cooked, but the meat should be almost butter soft underneath it. I think the beef let him down, I feel. It was very fatty, very chewy, maybe a bit overcooked. I don't think it was a winning main. I think it looked a lot better than, than it tasted. I think the main course was an exceptionally high standard. That's the kind of food you would get in a halfway reasonable restaurant. Food aside, Jane wants to discuss first impressions. So when I first met you, yeah. I actually thought you were a little bit away with the fairies. <laughs> and now? I just literally think you're such an absolute pickle. Oh, you're so sweet. Jane. You're so sweet. My opinion of you hasn't changed since the first moment I met you. OK and that was that you were warm, honest, caring. What about your opinions of me? Have they changed? So you, um, as Peter, have um, portrayed yourself as a person that you want us to see. Does that make sense? A little bit. The thing is, Peter, you're, um, you're a very confident human being, very confident human being. You, you like the finer things in life, don't you? You like, you do, you do, Peter, you do. We've got, like, this little pepper thing on the table. <laughs> I've got a grinder. My life is as generically ordinary as everybody else's. I just happen to have more nice clothes than most people. OK, the way that you've um, presented yourself, you have led us to believe that you are quite a sort of pompous human being. Sorry. I don't think I am in any way pompous. I'm actually quite offended now. Jane, would you prefer it if someone said to you, mm. well, you behave like a fat troll and you didn't make much... How would it feel to you? Uh, How I, would think, it... I think no. this is getting a bit personal. No, I'm, I'm being serious I here. How would you feel if you were sat at a dinner table mm. and somebody started attacking you? I think it was just the fact that she was speaking in a critical tone at all that just set the fuse on the tinderbox. It's about our perception. So it's, it's you, you can't... Then your perception is wrong. I think that to sit there in someone else's home and rip into them is appalling. I just wanted Peter to realise that sometimes he portrays himself as a human being that can be a little bit arrogant, a little bit pompous, a little bit full of himself, and maybe, you know, he needs to, like, tone it down a little bit because not everybody likes that. I'm just saying there was no malice in it. That It wasn't meant for you to feel deflated and sad and miserable. That's not my intent. Well, that's I'm... how it came across. OK, well, you shouldn't feel like that. You shouldn't. I should feel like you that shouldn't. because that's how I feel. But you shouldn't, sweetheart, you shouldn't. I've not... I, that's I'll clear not... some plates, cos I've had enough. 
I think Peter totally overreacted. I think in that case, you can disagree with what someone is saying about you, but you have to listen to them, and especially when you're the host. He took it all very, very personally. He made all of us feel so uncomfortable. Um, and then his reply just got really personal, and there was just no need for it. She has all the breeding of, of a cheap pair of shoes. She goes to someone's house and she carries on. But the show must go on. You've still got your selection of desserts to serve. Time to put on a brave face. Wow. Oh, lovely. Wow. Thank you. The lemon was really, really tart. It was a fight to get through it. Um, but just the, the, the pallor that had come over the whole night took away any of the sweetness in front of us. Dessert was annoyingly nice. That was probably the best point of his, the best part of his whole meal. Your food has been sublime. I'm sure Peter won't let that go to his head. I am a better cook than you. I put so much effort into this okay. to make it special for you, not for those two. I knew the other two were here for the experience, but not you. You were here to win and I wanted to show you I was worthy of your competition. Apparently, I'm only here for the experience. It was a fun little piece of shrapnel that I got to take in the face as there was crossfire going on. It was all about Jane, 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 Jane. Um, and in a way, he really insulted me and Adam. What you did was came out and attacked me. Okay. And you attacked me because you have no other way of dealing with people. This has nothing to do with the food that you have put in front of us this evening. What I am saying to you is, I am telling you what my opinion is of you. But you might not like it. I don't need to hear it in my own home by a complete stranger. Right, fine, but I'm telling you what I think of you. But you're good at telling people what you think of them, Jane. You're not good at hearing the truth. Sweet cheeks, neither are you. You might not like it, but I'm telling you what I think. Let's leave it there, shall we? The end. And the scores, dare I ask? The food was good, it was good. So on that basis, I'm going to score him a seven. I didn't really enjoy any of the food. He um, made the evening very uncomfortable and he was quite insulting. So this evening, I'm gonna score Peter a four. Oh! It just wasn't my kind of spread tonight. And honestly, as I'm walking away, the only flavor left in my mouth is bitterness. And that's why I'm giving a three. Ouch! As the host, it's up to Peter to read out the results. <laughs> this could be interesting. So let's see who's won. In fourth place is me. Oh! oh. I, I, I don't know why you're shaking your head at me. <clears throat> you won, Jane. Oh, my God. Enjoy the money. I hope it makes oh you very God. happy. Dear Lord, what a sad little life, Jane. You ruined my night completely so you could have the money, but I hope now you spend it on getting some lessons in grace and decorum, because you have all the grace of a reversing dump truck without any tyres on. <laughs> oh, I don't get it. Well, you wouldn't, let's be honest. There's nobody in there, love. <laughs> so, Jane, take your money and get off my property. Doggy bag, anyone? So, uh, well done, Jay. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> Just for the record, Charles and Adam came joint second. It's a travesty that I didn't win. An utter travesty. The best food, the best presentation, the best table, and that I get graded under Adam. Under Adam, who produced a plate of vomit. Under Charlotte, who served up rancid, chewy pork and an undercooked chocolate brownie. So I lose, and she wins. I hope she enjoys her money. Poisonous Pete has kicked us out of his house because he's a very sore loser. I hope you're not aiming that through his window. He wasn't impressed that he come for, and I don't think he's impressed that he got beat by me because I haven't got anything going on up here, apparently. I feel really, really, really great. I mean, this is absolutely brilliant. I'm buzzing, absolutely buzzing right now. The way that she took that abuse tonight, like, she deserves a billion points. Despite Peter's little hissy tantrum that he had at the end of the night, good luck to him on all the best. I hope, you know, he's happy. 
Can we enjoy treats while we're on a diet, like chocolate and cake? The Food Unwrapped team show over some fascinating science tonight at 8. The Simpsons are here next, and Bart is about to meet the ultimate prankster.